What if I told you that you have an untapped profit center at your startup with everything you need to get started and it's gonna add more value to your customer as well as profitability for your business. So what's the secret sauce? People. Building out your pro services team is just like scouting for a basketball team. You have to find those hidden gems, you gotta trade for veterans, and you gotta level up your rookies to hit those threes just like Steph Curry. And you might be wondering, what do people even do in a pro services team? Easy, they manage projects, relationships inside and outside of your company, and they provide essential services like say training or implementations. And you might be wondering, great, how much are they gonna cost and where do these people even come from? Well, you have three options. You can look within your company, you can look to contractors outside of your company, or you can hire new FTEs in your company. First, let's talk about current employees. And that's because that's where you should always start this hunt. There's virtually zero onboarding time because they're already in your company. Current employees also come with the benefit of knowing your SaaS app, right? They've been using it out in the field for however long they've been working with you and they're ready to hit the ground running and they are already on your budget. So win, win and win, right? Well, kind of. In order to unlock their potential, you need to compete with what they're already doing, their day job, right? And that needs to be a strategic decision as well as a lot of delicate change management. But it's definitely worth it starting here because again, you can get a profit center built up for basically nothing. So always build your pro services team starting with the people that you have today. And that might sound easier said than done. So you might be wondering, how do I even accomplish that? Stick around to the end of this video and I'm gonna share with you how I cleared up 20% of a team's time effectively creating two free employees at a business to help bootstrap a pro services team. One pro tip, never trim any culture building activities at all costs. If we do this right, it should not feel like if we're performing the exorcism of Emily Rose. It really should feel more like a cathartic spring cleaning of your closet, right? There's a lot of things that your employees actually don't wanna do that they maybe never had the guidance to say, hey, go ahead and take work off your plate. This is actually a symptom of lack of vision and clarity when it comes down to goals and an understanding of what their job even entails. So a lot of times in the absence of goals and alignment, employees were just gonna look busy, right? They don't wanna get canned, it's a tough economy, and they wanna look like they're producing. The thing is that they may not always have the same vantage point that leaders have to understand where they should be putting their time. So they just pick up a lot of different tasks and projects, a lot of routine meetings. And when you look at them from a high level, there's always some place that you can trim. Again, I've seen up to 20% improvement. I honestly think that it could be far more than that if we're being realistic. I think 20% is a little conservative. So if you think about that, let's say you have a team of 10 or 20, if you increase their productivity by 20%, or rather, if you decrease their wasted time by 20%, now you've just created one, two, four different employees worth of effort out of your team, right? Without asking them to do more. If you just crack the whip harder and you ask them to do more, that's a recipe for pain. And with careful change management, you can navigate how do you look at what your employees are doing and what projects must be kept, which ones must be stopped, and which ones must be deferred or handed off to someone else entirely. Great, now that we've covered how you can use your existing team, let's move on to contractors. So think of contractors as free agent rock stars, right? Like special ops, you wanna bring these people in to solve a niche problem. Either they do something less expensive, they increase your bandwidth and capacity, and or they increase your expertise at doing something. The work that a contractor puts out also tends to be at a very high percentage of being billable. What that means is for every hour that they're putting in or every 10 hours, eight or nine of those hours is going to a statement of work where your company's actually making money for it. Contrast that to your full-time employees where there's culture building and there's training and there's onboarding and there's like HR and administrative stuff and IT stuff. All of that overhead ends up eating away from how much your FTEs can perform uh, billable tasks. Whereas your contractors, you can basically say, hey, look, here's a, here's a new gig and get to it. And that's the nature of the engagement with them, right? They're basically just working on projects. However, let's take off the rose tinted glasses for a second. And not all is perfect when working with contractors. There's other trade-offs. They're going to have more volatility when it comes down to how much they cost, right? So let's say you have a, a different series of contractors. Well, if you need to work with one versus the other, or maybe you have one person in one region and somebody else in another region, 
they're going to have different rates. So that's going to impact how much your margins are on your services. So there's less predictability there. Speaking of unpredictability, they also can turn down your work, right? That's the nature of contractor, right? They can take the contract or not take the contract. And you really can't get upset about that. Uh, I was working with somebody once who decided to go uh, see all of the national parks and good on her, right? I actually was excited for her trip, but it, how that impacted our business really wasn't her problem, right? As she is an, under no obligation, as am I, to provide her more work. So the nature of working with a contractor is different and one that you need to find a balance for. Another plus to working with contractors is I used to work in a business that had a lot of seasonality to it. And what that means is that when the summertime would come around, spring, summertime, and maybe a little bit into the fall, that's when everybody was out there trying to fly drones and get all of their work done. The thing is that that would create basically like this surge, right? The summer rush, the swell of everybody trying to do everything when there's daylight. So the answer that we had to that was leveling up our contractors and making them available for that time of year. And they all understood that there was a seasonality to it. So that was just the name of the game, right? We didn't set this expectation that they were going to have full-time employee no matter what. We just said, hey, when we have gigs, you have gigs. And when we had gigs was during the high season. So the nice thing about that is even though sometimes you pay more for a contractor per hour or per day or whatever the unit of time is, uh, you also can make better margins when you consider that you're, you don't have this expense the rest of the year when you're not working with them. And last but not least, there's new hires. So I left this option for last because it really must be your last resort if you're starting a pro services organization. Let me tell you why. So new employees come front loaded with the most upfront investment in time and cost. So think about you have to recruit them and even find them. Then you have to make them an offer. They have to accept. They have to quit their last job. Now they have to onboard and start at your company. They're going to have issues with the laptop. It goes on and on and on. So it's actually really common to go three or even six or more months before you're truly getting the full potential out of a, of a new hire. Now this is to an extent true with contractors. The difference being that with contractors, they tend to get hired for their reason, right? Either they're already ready to spin up and they can scale you or they bring expertise. So they tend to hit the ground running. However, with FTEs uh, that you're bringing on, you tend to have to do a lot more training, especially in your either your industry or your application. Now, it is possible to hire somebody that comes with that expertise and definitely look for those people, but you don't always get that option. So guys, we're going to go ahead and do a recap. You want to use current employees first, especially if you're just starting. They know your app, they know your customer, and you just need to make space for them in order to put them to work. Second, you want to have some contractors to come in to help you solve for scale, to help you solve for seasonality, to help you solve for lack of expertise in your team. Using uh, something that I like to call contractor arbitrage, you can actually take somebody, let's say that somebody's rate is about $100 an hour, and because now they're in your, your marketing, uh, they have your uh, brand, they have your um, basically your content polish. You can up level and charge a premium on top of their time, ensuring that their time is basically going to be profitable. So contractors are number two. And number three is new FTEs, new hires. This is the last option and really one that you want to explore once you already have a program going and you know how many services you're delivering and you have a straight line of sight to how profitable you're going to be by adding this new person. That brings us to the end. If you like that content, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.